of our God and our Lord. We are here to give thanks to him. He's just been so good to us all. We come with gratitude. We come appreciating his goodness to us. So let's, uh, let's join our hearts in prayer. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for pouring out your goodness on us all the days of our lives. Father, we thank you for being, uh, Lord, uh, our, our rock, our strength, our hope, our courage. Lord, you are a mighty warrior, always fighting for your people, Lord God. You have loved us with an unending, steadfast love. And we ask, Lord God, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us now here in this place. Lord, that Jesus be exalted, that he be lifted up here. Father, we pray for all of your people in all the earth, wherever they are, as they worship you. Lord God, we pray that Jesus be lifted up in every nation. Father, we thank you and we love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we are wearing the mask. I got my mask here, somewhere here, (laughs) as we worship, just to protect the health of vulnerable persons among us. So let's all stand up, and we're going to sing our God's praise. Amen. As we get ready to sing, I want to turn your attention to the screens as together we read from Psalm 100. I love this command of the scripture. It says to make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, Serve the Lord with gladness. I hope you're here this morning and that you are glad. Come into his presence with singing. We're going to shout together and make a, a joyful noise unto our God. Know that the Lord, it is he who is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And so we enter his courts with thanksgiving. This month is a Thanksgiving month and we're going to talk a lot about that. Enter his courts with praise even. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness to all generations. Let's sing to him.
blessed be your name. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glory. and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus made it all all to him my own sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as Died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, and all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, He washed it white as snow. Yes, sin. Had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Yes, he washed it white as snow. No, praise the one who paid my debt. Raise this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raise this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who 
Scripture tells us that when we were still in our sins, Christ died for us. If there's anything to be thankful for at any point in time, whether it's today, tomorrow, it is the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's sing together.
God, we come into your house to pour out our hearts before you, to humble ourselves before you. Lord God, you tell us to come before you in reverence and awe. Lord God, you have been so good to us, we can't begin to express our gratitude. Lord God, we come in the name of Jesus. We come, Lord God, rejoicing that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That your goodness, Lord, never comes to an end. We come, Father, thanking you above all else for what was done there on the cross for each and every one of us, for all this world, Lord God. We give you thanks, Father. You gave your son. You offered him up. He gave himself there on that cross, Lord God. And we, we come, Father, pouring out our hearts. We come this morning, Lord God, thanking you. Thanking you for loving us in all the twists and turns and ups and downs of life. Lord God, there you have been our hope, our strength, lifting us up when we have fallen, giving us courage when we've been afraid. Lord, pouring hope into our hearts when, when we've had no hope. Lord, we come today to thank you, Father, for all the ways you've, you've been so good to us, Lord God. And, and we, we can't even begin to express, Lord God, how thankful we are. And Father, we come to pray this morning, Lord God, for all of your people wherever they are. All your people in all this earth, Lord God, we lift before you, we praise you, and we thank you, and we give thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give thanks to our God. Come to our Lord. Well, he is so very good. Amen. Have a seat. It's good to be here. Let's uh, give thanks for our musicians. Thank you so much. Can't tell you what this means to me to sing God's praise. And it is good to, very good to be here. We're glad that you have come to join us this morning. If you are visiting here with us, maybe for the first time, we welcome you. We try very hard to be a family, a team working together. We have a lot of ways to connect into the life of this congregation. Uh, we have groups called Connecting Groups. If you're not in one, I would encourage you to talk to me after worship. I'm going to be right out front. I'm going to scoot out there so I can catch up with people to talk. I'm going to be right out in front of the church building this morning after worship. If you want to get into a connecting group, let me know. Look in the bulletin there. Andy McMullen uh, leads our connecting groups. Um, we have a lot of ways to, to get connected. Put your faith into action. I want to tell you, give you a little update. We've been doing this food distribution ministry now for ever since this COVID season started. I see Brian's over here. Brian's been directing that for us. And we are serving, because you all are so generous, and so many of you are volunteering, we are serving up to 250 families per week. And not just with a little bag of a few groceries, but uh, giving each family about, what, $60 or so worth of groceries each week. And it's not every family comes every week. There's about 500 or so, so a lot of families are coming every other week. But not only is it people coming, but we have about 80 people, 80 families that we are delivering groceries to. And a whole team of you have been delivering those groceries. My wife, Lisa, has been coordinating that for us. And it means a whole lot. We are getting beautiful um, letters written to us. Just people so very thankful. A lot of people out of work at this time. A lot of people struggling. So thank you very much. You're very welcome to to get involved. I wanted to tell you about another letter we got in the office this week. We have teams called Third Saturday Teams, and you're welcome to be a part of it. Mike West right here leads that for us. And look, he won't raise his hand. You gotta raise your hand there, Mike. Look, he's, he's hiding. So our Third Saturday Teams go to homes of uh, needy persons in the county, mostly elderly needy persons uh, doing uh, repair, small repairs, yard work, sometimes house cleaning. And we received a beautiful uh, letter this week, uh, a woman who uh, our team went and really helped her a lot. And she said, you know, I, I don't have any money to express my, my, my gratitude to you with. She said, but I know I, I've decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you all each and every night. And, you know, the Bible says it is the poor who are rich in faith. And when Paul wrote to the Christians in Corinth, they were a relatively prosperous congregation. He said, you give what you have. You can give generously to those who are hungry, those who are in need, and they will give you what they have, which is they will pray for you with great faith. And I know all through these years, because you all have been so incredibly generous to the needy, to the poor, uh, a lot of prayers have been lifted up for us by people who are great in faith. So I'm very thankful and grateful for that. 
wanted to invite you the evening before Thanksgiving, so Wednesday evening, not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday, whenever it is, a couple Wednesdays from now, uh, we're going to have a Thanksgiving worship service right here in the tent, 7 o'clock that night, and we're just going to give thanks to, to our God. Uh, Thanksgiving is a uniquely American holiday, and so every year on Thanksgiving, the night before, we, we pray for our nation. And I know that many, many of you, I'm going to guess all of you, have been praying for our nation. I would invite you to join us that night. I would also invite you to continue to join us as we fast and pray for our nation every Wednesday from sunup to sundown. And we're going to do that all the way through January 20th, which is Inauguration Sunday. So for this whole, whole time of a lot of political uh, concern and uh, just a lot of lot going on in our nation. This pandemic, we keep looking at the numbers, not looking good. So join us in fasting, in praying every Wednesday, sun up to sundown. This morning at uh, our 11 o'clock worship, we are having some folks getting baptized here this morning. And we're really excited about that. Two, uh, two young women are coming that we know of who have signed up. And then a number of others have told me they're going to be here to be baptized. So um, so that's exciting if you would lift that in prayer. But I wanted to say to you, during this worship hour right now, if the Lord touches you, if you have come to faith in Jesus and have not been baptized, I would invite you during our last song this morning to just come on over here and we will, we will baptize you uh, in the name of our, of our God. So let's, uh, let's join our hearts in prayer. Father, we, we do thank you. You've been so good to us, Lord God. You've, you've poured out your goodness upon us, Lord, and we are so grateful to be able to, to give, Lord God, what you have given to us. You tell us to whom much is given, of them much is required, Lord God, and so you have given so much to us, Lord God, and we're so grateful to be able to give and to give and to give uh, your love to a broken world all around us. We thank you, Father, for this nation that we live in. We thank you. Lord God, that you promise that you will be uh, the rock of a nation. You will be the defender of a nation. Lord God, that righteousness will exalt a nation. And so, Father, we pray that you would lead us always in paths of righteousness. Lord God, we, we lift up this nation. We lift up this world to you. Father, that in every nation, Jesus, be exalted and lifted up. We ask as we go to your word right now, Father, that you would be speaking to our hearts Lord God, we love you, we thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to begin a series of messages now for the next several weeks on a grateful heart. So God created us to be people filled with gratitude. If my heart is anything but filled with gratitude, my life will not shine brightly with the love of God, with the goodness of God to this world all around us. We've been so blessed. God has been so good to us. We have every reason to be thankful, every reason to be grateful. But I'm pretty sure you're like me. We are so easily in any place but that place of gratitude. We so easily get feelings for sorry for ourselves. We so easily lose sight of how amazingly blessed we are. We so easily sink into our pity parties, poor me, poor me. We so easily forget that God has blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed us. And so then sometimes we, we're like, what am I doing? Why am I so just feeling sorry for myself, feeling so bad? And it's like we can't find our way back to that place of gratitude. And so what we're gonna look at for these three weeks is how do we get there? How do we become people who are thankful, who are grateful? You know, all, that Bible that God give, gave us, all of it is just like an operator's manual for life. So if you buy a, a, a computer, you buy a car, you get an operator's manual. The people who made it, who know how it works, say, do this, and it will work well. So how many times in the Bible does God say, give thanks, give thanks, over and over and over and over Again, he's telling us, if you want your life to go well, I know how life works. He says, your life won't work well if you are not a grateful, thankful person. If you're feeling sorry for yourself, your life won't work well. Now, you can do everything the operator manual for your car says to do, but you can pull out on Route 22 and someone swerves across the center line and wrecks your car. But you know what? God says to us, look, even when the world 
crashes up against you. If you do things my way, it will be well. So even when the circumstances of our life are anything but what we think should make us grateful and thankful, God says, if you will be a thankful, grateful person, it will be well even in the worst, in the worst circumstances. So this week, we're going to think about moving from grumpy to grateful. Somebody say amen to that. All right. Next week, from thoughtless to thankful, and then finally from selfish to satisfied. So this week, we're going to be thinking about just plain gratitude, having that gratitude in our hearts. How do we get from these grumpy places that we find ourselves in to that place of gratitude? Next week, we're going to look at how thoughtless we become. We lose sight so easily of of the people that we're supposed to be for those all around us. How do we move from thoughtless to thankful? And, And that word thankful means not only feeling the gratitude, but giving the thanks. How do we actually give thanks to God? How do we actually do this thing of being thankful? And then the following week, from from selfish to satisfied, I won't stay grateful. I won't continue to be a person who gives thanks if I'm not satisfied with my life. But you know, the Bible tells us again and again, you can be content. You can be satisfied. You can have a deep depth of, of satisfaction in your heart, even when it would appear that your circumstances are horrible or terrible. So that last week, we're going to look at moving from selfish, because if I'm not satisfied, I'll be selfish, from selfish to satisfied. So this morning, grumpy to grateful. We're going to look in the scripture at three things that happen to our lives when we're not grateful, when we don't have that gratitude in our hearts. And then we're going to look at three things to do to get gratitude. Because all these things God tells us to do when we look at his word do this, do this, do this. He tells us how to do that. And I know when I'm at my worst, it it feels like I just don't know how to climb out of this pit that I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm grumpy, I'm whatever, and I just don't know how to climb out of it. Here's God saying, I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how to get out of that pit. So let's begin thinking about what happens when we're not grateful. Let's look in the book of Psalms here. This is Psalm 73. Uh, a man named Asaph wrote this psalm. The word psalm means songs. So these were songs that they were singing in the temple. And if we had time to read this whole psalm, he's talking about how ungrateful he, he had been at a, point, at a certain point in his life. He was looking around and he saw other people whose lives seemed to be going so well. He saw other people who seemed to have everything. And he said, I realized they weren't even good people. They were people who really weren't paying any attention to God or how we're supposed to live, but God tells to, and yet everything seemed to be going great for them. And so Asaph got angry, he got bitter, he got grumpy. And so look at verse 21. When my soul was embittered, I became bitter. He said, I forgot all about how good God had been to me. I'm looking at everybody who seems to just be doing so great. And I became bitter when my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in heart. I got an attitude. I got an attitude about life. I got an attitude about God. So at verse 22 then, I was brutish and ignorant. There it is. I was grumpy. I was just grumpy. I wasn't being a blessing to people around me. I was angry at other people who weren't being a blessing, and yet everything went great to them. So I said, forget it. I'll just be a grump. I was brutish and ignorant. And then he says, I was like a beast towards you. I was angry at you, God. I was just ticked off at you. You're blessing all these other people. What about me? And so at verse 23 then. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand, but God, you didn't give up on me. When I was a beast towards you, when I was just plain grumpy, when I wasn't thankful or grateful, you didn't give up on me. He said, and now I look back. You're with me all the time. You always were with me. You're holding my hand. You're right by my side. Look at verse 24. He says, you guide me with your counsel and afterwards you receive me to glory. God, you didn't give up to me every step of the way. You've been showing me the way and you've given me a hope that is even even beyond this life. So let's lift this up. First of all, if I forget how good God has been to me, then... I will forget 
that I am here to be good to those all around me. If I forget how blessed I am, I will forget that I am here to bless others with all the blessings that you have given me. I'll become a grump. I won't, my life won't shine with the goodness of God. You know, I, I'm convinced one of the reasons God keeps telling us, be grateful, be thankful, keep giving thanks, because if you don't, you will not be attracting anyone to me. You know, bringing this world to Jesus, bringing the world to the goodness of God, is not a matter of promotion. It's not we, we promote Jesus, yea, Jesus, yea, Jesus. We attract. It's a matter of attraction. We attract people to Jesus. But let me ask, are you attracted to someone who's always feeling sorry for himself? Are you attracted to someone who's, who's brutish and ignorant, as Asaph said, who's, who's grumpy, who, who just never, you know, he's never satisfied, never content? Of course not. We're not attracted to those people. And so if I forget how blessed I am, how good God has been to me, I will not be attracting people to Jesus. More than anything else, that's what I want. I want my life to be a, a life that attracts people, that brings people to this, this amazing God, this God that every person on the face of this earth needs, this amazing salvation, this saving grace, this love, this grace that, that rescues us, not only for this life, but for all eternity, more than anything else. That's what I want my life to be. But if I'm not grateful, if I'm just feeling sorry for myself and getting grumpy, I will not be attracting the world to Jesus. So that's this first thing. If I forget, I'll just be a grump. Let's look here in the book of Isaiah for a second thing that happens to us uh, if we forget. So hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. And here's now what the Lord says. Children have I reared and brought up. He's speaking about the people of Israel. He says, I, I've, I've raised you up. I've blessed you. If you think about this history of the people of Israel, that first group of people that God began to relate to, right? He, he adopted them as his children. They were, remember, just wandering nomads. They had nothing. He said, I, I made you to be a, a nation. I, I gave you a land. And then when you foolishly left my, your, the land that I gave you, you ended up slaves down in Egypt. I came and I rescued you out of that slavery. You had no hope, but I rescued you. I brought you back to your land. I blessed you and blessed you and prospered you and prospered you. Children have I reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. But they've turned their back on me. They have forgotten how good I've been to them. When we look back and we realize how good God has been to us, and yet we forget, we so often forget. We forget what he's done. We forget where we were, hopeless like the Israelites, slaves in Egypt. We forget where we were, nomads, just wandering around with no real purpose in life. We forget how good God has been to us. We begin to think that all oh, the, the, the good that I have in life, well, yeah, it's because I kept going. It's because I, I, you know, I did it. I, I got this life for myself. It's <laughs> God saying, no, I'm the one who blessed you. But he says to the Israelites, but about the Israelites, they have rebelled against me. They forgot how good I was to them, so they just turned their back on me. At verse 3 then. He says, the ox knows its owner. So if some ancient person owned an ox to pull the carts, to pull the plows, of course, that person would feed the ox. That person would have a, a barn for the ox. Uh, the ox knows its owner and the donkey, its master's crib. The donkey knows that the master will fill the, the feeding trough, the crib, with food. The animals know who has provided for them, who takes care of them. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. They've forgotten. And so at verse 4 then, Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly, they have forsaken, they've turned their back on the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. The relationship is completely broken. And that's what we see. A second thing that happens, if I forget how good God has been to me, eventually I will turn my back on God. It might be that I turn my back on God because I'm in a hard place right now. There's hard circumstances in my life and I, and I just say, God, you're not helping me. You never did help me. 
turn my back on him and just walk away, rebel against him. Or it might be that everything's great and I begin to say, I did this, I did this, I built this life for myself. What do I need God for? If I forget that it's God who has blessed me every step of the way, eventually I'll turn my back on him. Eventually we'll be estranged. There will be no more relationship. Remember when the people were first getting ready to go into the land uh, and uh, to go into the land after they had been slaves and Moses has been leading them. That's who God used to lead them out of slavery, leading them through the wilderness back to their land. And Moses warned them. He said, look, when you get into that land and God begins to prosper you and you've got plenty of food and you've got good houses and you've got warm clothes to wear and you have all this, he says, beware lest you say to yourself, my might and my strength have gotten me all of this. And certainly for those of us living in a very prosperous nation, right, it's easy for us to forget that every breath of air we breathe, every bite of food we eat, every stitch of clothing we have on our bodies is a gift from God. It could all be gone like that. It's always a gift from God. And so if I forget that, then inevitably I will turn my back on God. Let's look at a third thing now. Let's look in the book of Jeremiah here. A third thing that happens if I forget how good God has been to me. So here, give glory to the Lord your God. Give thanks. Give praise. Be grateful. Be, be thankful. Give glory to the Lord your God before he brings darkness. He's speaking to that same group of people, the Israelites. And Jeremiah is saying to them, you've forgotten, you've forgotten, you've forgotten. Get back to that place where you're thankful. Get back to that place where you're giving glory, you're giving thanks to God. He says, do it before he brings darkness. Before your feet stumble on the twilight mountains. And while you look for light, he turns turns it into gloom and makes it deep darkness. Here's the third thing that happens if I forget how good God has been to me, if I forget how good God has been to me, he, what, will bring darkness. He will put me into that place of deep darkness. In the book of Hebrews, it says it this way, he chastens those whom he loves. In the book of Psalms 34, it says, he put his hand heavy on me. I had forgotten, I had forgotten. He put his hand heavy on me, pushing me down. God will put me into that place of darkness. Why? Look at the next verse, verse 17. He says, but if you will not listen, my soul will weep in secret for your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly and run down with tears. God's weeping for us when we forget him, when we just go our own way, when we're doing anything but being a blessing to those all around us, God weeps for us. He puts us into that place of darkness because the Lord's flock, the Lord's people has been taken captive. He puts us in that place of darkness. He chastens us. He pushes us down with his heavy hand until we look up to bring us back, to bring us back to him. He knows we need him. He knows an ungrateful heart is the worst thing that can happen, the worst thing that can happen to us. If I, if I don't remember how good God has been to me, then I'll treat people any which way. What, the, what difference does it make? There's no God who's been ever, ever been good to me. If I forget how good God has been to me, then I'll just wallow in my, my despair, forgetting about the fact that I've been called to that I have some food in my belly, I got some money in my wallet, so forgetting that I've been called to be a blessing to those who don't have any food, who don't have any money, forgetting that I've been called to bring the love of Jesus to people who have been walking maybe through the same struggle that I've been walking through, if I forget, then I'll just turn my back on it all. And so God says, okay, Craig, okay, Craig, I'm going to have to do this. It breaks my heart, Craig. I'm sob- Isn't that amazing? God sobbing for you and me. God weeping bitter tears for you and me because he loves us so much and he knows, he knows how much we need to remember, to remember him. All right, so this sermon so far, say preacher, this isn't a very encouraging sermon. Somebody say amen to that. All right, so what do we do then? God always tells us what to do. So how do I get that place? I don't wanna be a grump. 
I don't want to end up with a broken relationship. I don't want God pushing me down into the darkness because he loves me and has to correct my heart. So how do I get to that thankful, grateful place? And maybe you're sitting here right now and you're saying, yeah, and preacher, if you knew my life, if you knew the pain and the hurt that I've been struggling with in my heart for decades, preacher, this, this to-do list better be pretty good, preacher. It better be pretty good. But you know what I've learned being a pastor all these many years now is the depth of pain. The depth of pain. We, we so often feel like our pain, we're so alone in our pain. We so often feel the depth of pain in so many, 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 many hearts. Really, in all of our hearts is amazing. This is a hard, it's a hard world. A deeply painful world world, a world that will break our hearts inevitably. That's why Jesus said you will have tribulation, huge, huge trouble. This world will break your heart. So when God says now do these things, do these things, this is not just a light little easy list when you just happen to be in a funk one day. No, God's talking about in the hardest of circumstances with the deepest pain. Here's what to do so that you remain grateful or so that you can become thankful. Become thankful again. Let's start with Psalm 9 then. So three things to do. So here's David. He says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Here's our key word, recount. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. To recount, well, literally means recount, right? But it means to remember and to tell. To remember and to speak. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. Now, that, that seems like a pretty simple sentence, but right there is our first to-do. Our first to-do is to remember, to remember to not forget how good God has been to me. Tell people about it. Remember and tell your blessings. Speak them out. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. You know, it's pretty amazing the way our brains work, that when you hear yourself speaking, what you hear yourself say goes deeper into your brain. And if you hear yourself say something uh, twice and then three times and then four times, that goes deeper and deeper and deeper into your brain. So if I am telling people how good God has been to me, if I'm recounting his wonderful deeds, if I am speaking them out, then all the more I will remember them. So for years now, I've preached four times every weekend. And if I tell, a, a, let's say, a story from our, our family or some experience that I've had, I tell that once, then I tell it a second, then I tell it a third, I tell it a fourth time. That story is in my head. I'm not forgetting it when I've told it. And so that's what David's telling us here. What the Lord's saying is, speak your blessings, tell them. Tell people how good God has been to you because in doing that, not only are you being a blessing to, to the person to whom you're speaking, you are remembering then. You will remember all the more. You know, with uh, marriages, with friendships, with siblings, when there's a brokenness in, in relationship, you know, a key thing is you, and I often tell this to, so let's say a husband comes to me and he's telling me about his marriage struggles. I say, you need to be telling your wife every single day why you love her. She needs to hear it, but more than that, you need to hear yourself saying it. You need to hear yourself saying it because what you are saying will go deeper and deeper into your heart so that you don't forget. It's that way with God. So at verse two then, he goes on here. I will be glad and exult in you. That means I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be singing it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be telling the world, I will sing praise to your name, O most high. That's part of why we come to sing his praise. I love to sing with my little phone, YouTube, to sing all the praise songs, but all the more I love to sing with God's people because all of us, we're not only singing to God, but we're singing to one another. And we're all telling one another how good God's been to me. I'm singing this song, yes, for him, but I'm also singing this song to tell you how good God has been to me. And when we sing it out, when we speak it out, we remember and we remember. So if you're finding it hard to get back to that grateful place, start telling people how good God's been to you. Start telling. My father, his, uh, his last 10 or so years, he struggled more and more with 
dementia and Alzheimer's. And I began to realize that every time I saw him, he was telling me the same stories over and over again. And he had a set of stories, maybe, I don't know, nine, ten different stories. And he was always telling me these stories. And I began to realize, I began to realize, first of all, he had picked those stories very purposefully. He wanted me to hear those stories. Uh, he, he felt like there was something for me. And there was in those stories. But I also realized every single one of those stories had the same theme. How good God had been to him when he couldn't figure something out, when he didn't even know what he was doing, but God was at work. Every one of those stories he was telling over and over and over again was about how good God had been to him. And I know he was not only wanting to share that with me, but he was sharing those same stories with everybody. He was remembering and remembering and remembering as his mind was failing by speaking it out. He was remembering how good God had been to him. If you're feeling bad about your life, if you're feeling sorry for yourself, if you're just stuck in a kind of an angry, frustrated place, start speaking out how good God has been to you. Start and speak it to people, but, but sing it out loud just when you're by yourself in your car. Read the, the Psalms, the, the Psalms of Thanksgiving out loud. See, hearing what you're saying will put it deeper and deeper into your heart. So let's go on now to our, our next scripture here, 1 Thessalonians. So, you know, these words rejoice always, verse 17, pray without ceasing, verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so here's the second thing to remember how good God has been to you. Yep. Speak it out. Secondly, choose to give thanks in all circumstances, no matter what's going on, choose to be grateful, choose to to give thanks. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 here, verse 20. Because that, that first Thessalonians give thanks in all circumstances. But the same man, Paul, wrote this. Look, he ratchets it up a little bit. Look what he says here. Giving thanks always and for everything. Woo! Always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're sitting here right now saying, Preacher, you just gave me an attitude... Because preacher, you know, how am I supposed to give thanks for this horrible thing that happened? For that terrible thing that's going on? How am I supposed to give thanks for the pain that's been in my heart for so long? Do we have an all-powerful, all-loving God or do we not? Is our God infinitely powerful and infinitely loving or is he not? When even the worst possible things happen to us, let's say when someone sins against us or against someone that we love, sins against us horribly, God's not the author of sin. Certainly he didn't cause that, but could he not have stopped it? He's infinitely powerful. Could he not have stopped it? But he didn't. Ooh, preacher, you're getting me angrier. Could he not have stopped it, but he didn't? Well, if he's infinitely powerful, yes, he could have stopped it. And if he's infinitely loving, then there was a good reason why he didn't. Then he saw something that he would use, even that person's sin against you, in a powerful, great way. I can give thanks for everything, if I remember this infinitely powerful, infinitely loving God never ceases to love, never turns his head and looks the other way, never says, well, I can't stop it, or I'm just going to smash him. This is a God of infinite love and infinite power. And so in the worst circumstances, in the most horrendous, and maybe you say, preacher, you don't know my life. Well, maybe you know my life and what happened to my daughter. The sin against my daughter. And I wouldn't even probably be preaching this verse right now. Because I wouldn't have a right to preach it right now. If I had not been through something as horrible as what happened to her. But if we choose to give thanks always and for everything. If we choose to give thanks. And maybe if that word for, for, for everything is too hard. Then go back to Thessalonians. In all circumstances. If we choose to give thanks in all circumstances, then there will be gratitude in our hearts. Then we can remember that even in the worst moments, even in the hardest circumstance, even in the worst things that happen, still the goodness of God remains. 
still the goodness of God is there. And we can stay grateful. Because see, the thing, you know, that, that horrendous thing that, that happened, if I, if I say there is no way I can give thanks in that circumstance, well then some other horrendous thing is going to happen in life too. And then some other horrendous thing is going to happen. Because that's the way this world is. And then, of course, I was talking to somebody recently who said, well, then I'm just ticked at God for allowing a world to be this way. But this is chapter 1. And then there's chapters 2, 3, 4, and 5. If life ended at chapter 1, in any good novel or in any good movie after the first couple of scenes, it'd be pretty bad. But this is only chapter 1. And we can't see. You never figure out in a good novel, you never figure out all that was going on in chapter 1 until you get toward the end of the story. And when you get toward the end of the story, then you figure out what was really going on in chapter 1. And that's the way our life is. So we we can remember if we speak it out loud, if we choose to give thanks in all circumstances. And let's go to our our last scripture here, back into the gospel of John. So here Jesus is speaking. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You can remember how good God has been to you if you keep your eyes on Jesus. If you keep your eyes on him, you keep your attention focused on Jesus, then you'll never forget how good God has been to you. You keep your eyes on him there on that cross. There on that cross, not only carrying your failings and your sins, but carrying your griefs and your sorrows on himself. Taking your griefs and your sorrows, your sins, your failings, the the hurt and the pain, your griefs and sorrows on himself. Taking it all to hell to leave it there so you could be healed. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll always be grateful. If, if the voices of shame are just in your own head or from around you or just beating you up, then you keep your eyes on Jesus and you see Jesus stand up and say, he is without sin, cast the first stone. And you'll stop feeling sorry for yourself. You keep your eyes on Jesus when that blind man is just crying out, crying out, begging just for a few pennies, begging for some kind of help. You're in the middle of a dark night and a hard time and you're crying out to Jesus. You keep your eyes on who he is, how he walked over and loved on that man and blessed him. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You'll never forget how good God has been to you. Keep your eyes on him waiting to wipe away every tear from your eyes. And finally, you close your eyes that last time and open them. And there he is, wiping the tears away from your eyes. Keep your eyes on him and you'll never be grumpy. (laughs) You'll never, you'll never forget how good he has been to you. What an awesome God he is. Amen. Amen. Let's pray right now. Father, we thank you and we love you. And we just lift our hearts up to you, Lord God. You have been so good to us. So good to us, Lord God. We don't want to be grumpy. We don't want to just turn our back on you, Lord God. We want to remember. We want to remember, Lord God. So put your praise on our lips. Put thanksgiving on our lips, Lord God. Just send us out like your son did. Just telling people to go and tell everyone what God did for them. Send us out telling this world how good you've been to us. Lord God, we, we pray, Father, that in every circumstance, in whatever's going on, Lord God, put that choice in our hearts that I will choose to give thanks always for everything in every circumstance. And Lord, above all, we ask that you would help us to keep our eyes on Jesus. We love you and we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. When you came in here, you were given a, a communion packet. If you could take that and just hold that now. Don't open it yet. We're going we're gonna to open them together. We're going to pray first. We're going to share the Lord's Supper. Then we're going to sing a last song. While we sing this last song, if you say, you know what? I need to be baptized. I need to say right now that I love Jesus, that I have faith in him. If you want to be baptized, we're going to be waiting for you right over there. But hold on to this right now, and then we're going to all pray together. Well, he took the bread that night. He gave thanks. He gave it to them. Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup. And he gave it to them. He said, this is my blood shed for you and for all the world. For the forgiveness of sin.
his body broken for you, feed on him in your heart, his blood shed for you, drink deeply the love, the love of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he gave his life on that cross for us all. Lord God, we just lift up our hearts before you now. We come to you confessing our sin, trusting in Jesus. Amen. And amen. If you have faith in Jesus, take this bread, take this cup. There's a clear plastic cover over the bread and then the tab is over the juice. You're welcome to feed on him, drink deeply in the love of Jesus. If the Lord's touching your heart right now to be baptized. Come join us right over here and, and get baptized.
everything I need, and I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Let's give thanks to our God. Amen. God, you're so good to us. We love you so much. We ask that you would go with us this day and always in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week. It's so good to be here. God bless you.